Hi everybody, so this is the video about what we are calling now the graphical oops, the graphical exploratory analysis module of the uh, of the QB. So if you're getting in right now into the group, uh, you know I'll, I'll, I'll give a very very brief uh, idea of what the QD is, but again we have you know a lot of other videos about this. The QD stands for question diagram, and it's basically uh, a way to standardize the formulation of hypothesis driven uh, research questions. So this detail is pretty important. Now, basically what this means is that every time you're formulating a hypothesis-driven uh, question, uh, you have to have three components uh, that we outline in a page. Okay? So these components are the hypothesis, or the hypothesized conclusion. There's a reason for this. I won't go into this. The variables that relate to the hypothesis, or the hypotheses, and the mock tables and graphics. Now, again, I won't go into the details of this, but basically, you know, once you have this structure, you will make sure of, you know, you will be getting two things out of this. Number one, uh, you get the internal consistency of your research question, right? Which means that, you know, all of these three components will be agreeing with each other. And you have a way of communicating with, uh, you know, the quantitative people. Okay. So basically, your statistician. Now, very important, as I said before, uh, QDs are about hypothesis. Okay. So, and this is a good thing. You know, this is the classical way, like I was trained, and most people in clinical research were trained. You have a hypothesis. You avoid what uh, you know most people would call fishing. Uh, have, by having a hypothesis, you're not going to be uh, finding things that don't exist, or you're going to be less likely to find things that don't exist. Again, I don't want to get into the, the, the theoretical discussions about this. But uh, one big point is that by focusing on hypothesis only, uh, you're missing something. Uh, again, I'm not stimulating people to fish over the data, uh, but if you want to start uh, exploring your data set, uh, and later on, using uh, very robust statistics to see whether that exploration is, uh, you know, resulted in something of value, you need to explore the data. So basically, the idea for the graphical exploratory analysis module of the, the QD is to add an exploratory, an innovation, um, uh, a discovery, if you will, module for uh, these research questions. Now, how do you do this? Well, basically, uh, you know, whenever you go through books or texts, uh, papers in relation to explorative for data analysis, you basically have three things that you have to define. And this is fairly similar to what we have the curiosity later uh, to the way we outline our question diagram. So number one, you have to define what are your outcomes of answers. So which variables you know do you want to say predict or argue answers against? Number two, you have to define your predictors. And number three, you have to define your strata. So I'm going to give you some completely made up examples, uh, just so that uh, you know we can get something a little bit more tangible. So let's say that in one given data set, you have your data dictionary. So the data dictionary is a list of variables uh, in you know, their definitions for everything that you have there. Uh, and basically, you want to explore this without the previous uh, hypothesis. Okay? So basically, what you're going to do is to list every single variable that could be an outcome. So I could have something there that would be like, uh, for example, uh, that. Okay. You know, I could have uh, something like, uh, you know, post-operative complications. 
I could have something like, you know, cost. So I could have a lot of different things. Very important, uh, whenever you're doing an exploratory data analysis, besides coding all or, or uh, writing down all the different variables that you have, you should also outline how can they be measured. So, for example, death could be measured, for example, whether you know a person died or didn't die, yes or no. It could be measured as time to death. It could be measured as, uh, for example, 30-day mortality. Could be measured as you know other periods of, of mortality. Could be measured like uh, intraoperative mortality. So, bottom line, the main point here is that for each of the variables that you select as your outcome, uh, you know you basically categorize them in any way you would like. Okay, and then you do exactly the same thing for the predictor. So, okay, I want, I think that age could be a predictor. Uh, whether patients have a certain disease, and I, then I could have multiple diseases. Uh, again, you name it. And then, you know, maybe you could uh, also break this down by different strata. So, okay, I want to know whether, you know, people of a given race or ethnicity are different. Whether certain age categories uh, could be different. And, and here, very important, you know, as you can see, uh, you know, something could be a predictor and uh, uh, a strata at the same time. Something that we do not allow in a, a question diagram, at least for a given hypothesis. Okay. Now, very important, keep in mind that for each one of these categories, and by categories I don't mean variables, I mean really like, okay, death, yes or no, or time of death, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's say that, you know, between variables and categories, you have something like uh, you know ten different uh, variables here, uh, ten different predictors, and ten different strata. What this means is that you're going to be multiplying all of these. So ten times ten times ten, you are going to end up with uh, you know one thousand different graphics uh, showing the relationship uh, uh, out of this. So it's truly exploratory. And you have to be careful again later on, we're not going to go over this now, uh, but uh, careful so that later on, whenever you're testing uh, whether these, this exploratory data analysis really generates something that is valid, it's not just a fishing expedition, you use the appropriate statistic. Now, how do you do this magic? You know, how can you, uh, uh, you know, come up with 1,000 graphics? Well, so here, this is something that you know I have been emphasizing to the data mining group, uh, which is the importance of using scripts. So I know a lot of people are like, well, you know, writing scripts, you know, I don't like to write code. Uh, but as I mentioned before, you know, there are at least two huge advantages to the use of scripts. Uh, the first advantage is uh, reproducibility. Later on, you know, you know exactly what you did. And the second advantage, which is comes in handy right now, is about automation. And what I mean by automation is that I won't go over the details of how to do this now, but is that uh, for something like uh, this table with uh, you know 10, 10, 10, say 30 different variables, I could create three vectors. Later on, we're going to see what this is, but uh, like you know the different types of death and blah blah blah. Each one of them, uh, and then another vector for predictors, and another vector for uh, different strata, and I can use some statistical packages to simply cross them and save 1,000 different graphics. And then you know you can go over quickly, go over these graphics, and these graphics will have an, 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 an uh, annotation about what uh, which. Uh, uh, you know, w in, in which ways these associations actually generate something that initially looks interesting. Again, this is not going to be the final thing. You know, there's a lot to be said about how to validate graphical or exploratory data analysis in general, but the idea is discovery. You know, to not restrict yourself just to uh, uh, think where you have previous hypothesis. So, you know, Future view, then I am going to uh, you know demonstrate how you can do this 
uh, with the package from the, the R language. Um, and we're going to see how, how this could be automated in a very, very simple way. Okay. Thank you. Bye.